let's get straight to the point. A lot of you out there are new to GD&T and you're starting to use positional tolerance to control your hole locations, but you're still not quite sure what's a good GD&T position tolerance value to use right here. Well today I'm going to give you guys a good, common, safe position tolerance value you can use in your designs. However, before we answer this question, it's critical we first understand what is the shape and the size of the tolerance zones that we're invoking in our two types of drawings. The two types being the traditional plus or minus type of drawing and the second type being our GD&T positional type of drawing, which is what we're trying to learn. Okay, so let's first look at that traditional plus or minus type of drawing. Right here, I've got a common drawing view of a simple part. It's a flat plate with a simple hole. I've got my location dimensions for that hole right here. And then I've got my hole call out right there. Okay, if you'll notice on my location dimensions, I'm invoking this plus and minus five tolerance of location. Well, if we were to zoom in and look right here at the shape and the size of the tolerance zone that we're invoking by using that traditional plus or minus five, it would look just like this. It's a rectangular tolerance zone that's plus or minus five by plus or minus five. And we know a plus or minus five is an upper limit of 5,000 and a lower limit of 5,000. So in reality, the total size is 10,000. So by invoking plus or minus five on these uh, location dimensions, it's really a rectangular tolerance zone that's 10 by 10. Okay, let's look at our GD&T positional type of tolerancing. Once again, I've got my simple part here. It's a flat plate with a simple hole. I've got my location dimensions here and here. Then I've got my hole call out right here. Now you'll notice I've taken that location tolerance away from the machinist. And since I've taken it away from them, I have to give it back to them somewhere. And I do that right here using this GD&T position tolerance. Now, if we were to zoom in and look at the shape and the size of the tolerance zone that we're invoking right there by using this GD&T position tolerance, it would look just like this. It's a cylindrical tolerance zone, and because it's cylindrical, it has a diameter. And that's actually what we're after today. We want to know what's a good GD&T position tolerance diameter that we can use in our designs if we're new to GD&T. Well, my recommendation is 14,000. Now you might be thinking, mm, seems kind of random, seems kind of arbitrary. Why 14,000? Well, it's actually because it's equivalent to that plus or minus five that we just looked at. Uh, next question might be, okay, I'm trying to learn this new style of GD&T position tolerancing. Why do I want it to mimic this old traditional rectangular tolerance? Well, it's because it's actually a great starting point. Manufacturing equipment doesn't move traditionally in a cylindrical fashion. It moves in linear X and Y and X and Z motions, and so it has tolerance of motion, and that's what this starting point does, is take advantage of those known achievable linear tolerances of motion, right? Okay, it's an established industry tolerance. You can talk to a machinist, you can talk to an inspector. They will both tell you plus or minus five is a great tolerance starting point. Plus or minus five is high precision and low cost. So it's a win-win and it's easily repeatable. In five to 10 years, you can take this design and replicate it very easily. Okay, so I'm suggesting or recommending you use 14 thousandths because it's equivalent to this traditional plus or minus five. And you finally might be wondering, how in the world are those two equivalent? I don't see it. This is 14,000 and this is plus or minus five. Well, to convert from one to the other, let's take a look. We start with our traditional plus or minus five rectangular tolerance zone that we know is really 10 by 10. And then we draw a circle around it, right? We make that circle tangential to those four corners or touching. Well, if our traditional rectangular tolerance zone is 10 by 10, that circle will end up being 14,000. Uh, how come that diameter is 14,000 and, and not 10? Well, if you're wondering that, let's first look right here. Let's pivot about this point right here 
right up to here. Now is that the diameter of our GD&T position tolerance? No, it's not. We have a long ways to go. So no, 10 thousandths is not our po equivalent positional tolerance diameter. 14 is for this. Now, if you guys are wondering how to convert any traditional rectangular tolerance zone into its equivalent GD&T position tolerance, look at my next video that's going to be coming out soon. Anyways, guys, once again, if you guys are new to GD&T and you're wanting to start specifying a position tolerance that you know that's common and safe to use, I recommend 14,000. All right, that's straight to the point. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys are interested in my upcoming videos, please check me out on Instagram at straight to the point GDT. And if you guys could do me another favor, go to the comment section below and let me know what you think of the new format. Again, thank you guys for watching.